eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hello, America. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you don't have Consumer Cellular yet, now is the perfect time to switch and save. For a limited time, new customers can get wireless service for as low as $15 a month for your first year. Yep, the same exact nationwide coverage as the leading carriers for $15 a month for an entire year. What are you waiting for? Call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com and use code RADIO15. See ConsumerCellular.com slash FIRSTYEAR15 for promotional details. You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. We're going to be chatting about, uh, oh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, super fast electric cars, uh, upgrades to Tesla and Lucid, although Lucid's not even out yet. They've already got upgrades in the works. Uh, We're going to talk to Brett Clark from Expel, talk about some products and why you should be using them. And uh, my BMW M3 is on Bring a Trailer. It is for sale. It, the auction starts now. Uh, before we get started on the show, uh, Geico is offering an extra 15% on car, motorcycle, and RV policies. That's 15% on top of the money Geico could already be saving you. So what are you waiting for? Check out Geico.com. And if you switch by October 7th, you'll get that extra 15% off. Just visit Geico.com to learn more. Hello. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, here with Bill Goldberg. Good morning. How are you? A little you? exhaust mashup this morning, huh? Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of crazy noises, I saw the video that you posted. Uh, uh, I guess you know Gear Gearheads is had your car on the dyno. It was it was it was making some some big noises. Um, I want to ask <laughs> you about that, but. Uh, well, real for uh, real quick, uh, it's time for Dodge Power Dollars. Uh, you guys heard us about it before, heard us talk about it. This means for each horsepower, you'll get ten dollars off your purchase on a Dodge Charger, Challenger, and Durango. So come on in for Dodge Power Dollars today for a pretty sweet deal. So we saw the car on the dyno with the front clip removed, so you can really see the turbos and uh, and uh, all the crazy horsepower and stuff that it's making. Sounds fantastic. But uh, then the guys, then Mario and the guys, I guess, took it out to the drag strip just to see what's uh, what's going on, and they didn't yeah. they didn't show us the results of that pass. It was a little bit of a teaser video. Hopefully, they sent you something a little more elaborate than what they posted. Uh, I have a couple more videos. Nothing, nothing much more elaborate. Just different angles and a couple different runs. Unfortunately. Um, you know, if you're not pushing the barrier, you you uh, you don't have the tendency to break things, as you know, in the BMW. So mm-hmm. we had a little breakage in the rear end. So uh, yeah, back to the draw, <laughs> not back to the drawing board, but you know, we gotta we gotta put her back together, and then uh, right, she spooled up a little bit, and then I think we 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 bent one of the the trailing arms or something. I don't know exactly. I gotta I gotta check in with Mario, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of power going to the ground. There's a lot of power to the ground. So they had slicks on it. So, but the engine worked out the way it was supposed to, right? Transmission held up, engine held up. Like, obviously when you do that, you got to find the weak link in the system. There's only one, you know, as soon as you find one, you're going to do it. It's (laughs) it's funny because when I was, when I was bringing my, when I had my red 93 Cobra at Seaman, I brought it back and I started redoing it. I know, I know, I got to get back on it. But uh, as I started redoing it, I went on there and I, we did the brakes. We did the big bare brakes. I got the six pistons, front and rear, 14 inch. And I replaced, um, when it went to SEMA, the brake kit was on there, but it, you know, it wasn't bled. It wasn't, it wasn't finished. I brought it back and I redid 
all of the brake lines, all the hard lines up and down the car in stainless steel. And then I, I redid uh, all the braided lines going to the calipers. And, and looking at the car, I realized, because it's a live axle, from the heart at the back of the car, there's the hard line that goes down the middle, basically down the tunnel, and then stops above the pumpkin, basically, above mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, the rear axle. And then there's another rubber line about a foot long that goes from that hard line to the axle. And then on the axle, on the axle housing, it has hard lines that go down the length of the uh, the, the axle tubes mm-hmm. and then back to braided lines to the calipers. That little two-foot line in the middle was the stock rubber hose. And I was like... I kept thinking that's going to be the weak link. Well, this thing's going to be at the track or on the autocross or something. That thing's going to blow because everything else has been done. So I did find one company that made just that that braided line with the right fittings and the stainless steel and all that stuff. And that's kind of what's going on with with your charger. You guys have made the big power, right? The engine's dialed in. That's bulletproof. Uh, I, either the transmission they knew was going to be bulletproof or they made some mods to it. I don't know. But eventually you're going to work your way down. And I, it's funny because when I saw that pass, I, I thought to myself, oh, they're testing it with slicks, like right out the gate with slicks. They weren't like, hey, let's do a couple of low-level passes on street tires just so we don't blow the rear end. And then we start <laughs> getting us. <laughs> you know what's happening is 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 I know that thing is scheduled to go up to speed core and now they're probably getting but pressed first. for time. They're yes. saying, "Hey, we've got to test it. If something breaks, we don't have time to to send it there broken and then get it back and redo it or get on a plane and start swapping parts." So, you know, you're right. They got what 10 days to you know 12 days or something to, you know, to get it, to get it worked it's out. It's all good. We picked up a couple new sponsors along, along the way because of it. And, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Strange got a phone call from me Sunday morning. So um, we're, we're all on top of it, man. You know, we've got uh, until the first, until it goes up to Wisconsin Speed Corps. Um, I have, I have complete faith in the guys. The fact is, is that they are indeed this car pretty much last year when they came out with, you know, the all wheel drive version of it. So, yeah. I mean, at least they had a base that they could go off of. Um, it wasn't reinventing the wheel, um, the wheels, that, but you know, um, hopefully we learned a little bit and um, you know, we're going to get it rectified within the next two days. Is, I there, imagine. is there any numbers that you can tell us they're, they're, 60 foot times or quarter mile times or top speed or, or what on the initial Not testing. Yet. All right. All right. Not yet. <laughs> all right. Not yet. <laughs> well, cause Until, you know, they're, 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 I don't want to say arbitrary, but you know, when you end up breaking stuff, it yeah. obviously alters everything. So, I mean, there's no reason to really put it out. That you know, in full transparency, Mario hasn't given it to me. Yet. He hasn't given it to you. Okay. No. So, but you spoke to him did he have did he have some feedback other than hey you know we broke some suspension pieces we need to get on the phone what was his feeling he's, he's, on he's, on running that the, car the positive feedback that he gave me was that you know we went with smaller turbos and uh went with smaller turbos higher higher um initial the the turbos are kicking on immediately and they're they're almost spooling up right yeah and that is a that's a different setup than the all wheel drive car that they did last year. Right. Um, bigger. They did bigger turbos, and it comes on you know later later in the game. Um, for what I'm doing and what I'm asking this car to do, this is the route that they chose, and they're very happy with it. You know, not only number wise, but performance wise, and getting out there responsive wise. So, you know, that was something that I learned. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think suspension is going to be a, a big, not an issue, but a big question mark in that all the stuff that we're changing underneath, how's it going to respond on the track? And then, you know, being daily driven, is it going to be tighter than a damn drum? A lot of the stuff that you went through with your, with your BMW. Yeah. Um, because I'm trying to make it, you know, the best of both worlds. 
Right. Um, well, that, that's actually an interesting point. When they did the all-wheel drive car, uh, that being a crazy kind of SEMA build, that was all about making the biggest horsepower number and, and an incredible quarter-mile time. Now, although your car can hit the drag strip and get a, a, a very, very impressive number— I know how you like to use your cars, and you'd have no oh, problem yeah. just kind of taking it out around town, around the, around the property, you know, mm-hmm. just drive it on the street a little bit. So, you know, the difference between, I don't know, 1,400 horsepower and 1,500 horsepower, you're probably not going to feel, believe it. Uh, no, but, no. I mean, we were able to beat the numbers of the all-wheel drive car. And then yeah. when you think about the, the comparison with the two, I mean, they're going to obviously go down the drag strip completely different. And I believe the rear-wheel drive car is going to be faster. And you know. uh, having a more of that low end torque, more low end power, you're going to feel around on the street. And although yeah. you're getting the suspension ready now, uh, and and making it bulletproof enough to run it down the drag strip with slicks on it, that's mm-hmm. not how you're normally going to use the car, right? So, yeah. and and that's the big thing is the slicks can be very harsh uh, yeah. on. On on the drive, on the train, rear, right? Yeah. You know, sir, all <laughs> yeah, of it, I, I, of course, yeah, yeah. right? All of it, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, as I was putting as I'm putting the truck together. Now, you mentioned the M3. The M3 was never meant to be a drag race vehicle in, the, in that re- in those regards. Now, we mm-hmm. I did weld in the subframe reinforcements, and I did the uh, the the trailing arms or, or some of the suspension pieces mm-hmm. from Turner Motorsports on the on the rear. Uh, but it was never going to have a slick on it. It was always, even just for the for for a road race course, it was never really meant to do that. It was just street tires. Yes. Now I do see an opportunity to take the truck to take the lightning down the drag strip with some slicks on the Absolutely. back. Absolutely. And for that reason, I've changed my plan on the rear suspension a little bit, and I went ahead of the game as we talked about when I had the rear end built. I had Mark Williams build some axles and stuff for it. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, all overkill now for my 208 horsepower that I'm making, but but hopefully but not soon. Yeah, hopefully I just don't want that to be the weak link later. I know we'll have to dial in the suspension and stuff like you're doing now, but yeah. you don't want the rear end to to break, especially when you're out there uh, having some fun with it on, on a track day. So uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. I I, I think those guys. At Gearheads are probably about as excited about it as you are in in that the different turbo setup and how they're getting it dialed yeah. in and rear wheel drive and uh, it's it's interesting. It's going to be fun. That you know that and they've got guys you know in their stable going to the track every week. A lot of pressure put on them you know with their builds, but I'm going to put more pressure on them than anybody because hopefully we'll have a TV show being filmed here soon to where this car is going to go up against some of the fastest cars in the world and it better damn be able to beat every single one of them. So Uh, Mario, you're on the clock. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because some of the news we've run into recently is more about the electric cars uh, that are going on. And uh, I'm going to touch on that for a second. Then we've got a guest joining us from expel um, and, uh, uh, and I've got the BMW M3 up on Bring a Trailer, so I'll, I'll touch on that again a little bit later in the show. But as you build your rear-wheel drive, big, high-horsepower turbo car, the fastest cars we're running into now uh, are electrification. Like, we've got— Four doors. You know, uh, uh, you and I were, were talking a little bit before uh, before we started recording, but uh, later this week— uh, on the show on Friday with, with that Adam and I do, we had already recorded an interview, and we spoke to Christian von Konizek. And just a fantastic interview, uh, fa- a fascinating guy. We also spoke to uh, uh, Sasha uh, – I forgot his last name, um, but he was Cohen. the designer. He was the, he was the, He's the designer for Konizek, but – uh, Konizag also has a design company that works on other projects. So, uh, and, and he kind of runs that as well. Selipanov. Selipanov. Yeah. yeah. Are there's there, there's an the unusual. There, the accents on, are weird. Yeah. Is it Selipanov? Yeah, but but yeah, very um, knowledgeable. And uh, awesome. he, he loves he, racing too. Yes, super into racing. Pulls a lot of influence on the design side. Pulls a lot of influence from uh, from McLaren F1 cars. Um, but anyway, the conversations with uh, 
with Konazag was, you know, we got into this phenomenal conversation about his three-cylinder turbocharged engine with no camshafts, runs on any combustible fuel, makes over 600 horsepower, um, and weighs about 75 pounds. Yeah, just weighs basically nothing. And and he said, yeah, and it's going in the Gemra, the, the four-seat, two-door crazy supercar. He goes, but that also has a hybrid powertrain, electric motors, and that's why it's going to be, I don't know, super fast and, I don't know, 1,100 horsepower. He said zero to 60 in under two seconds is what he told me. And and I said, why combine the gas engine with the uh, – with the electric, why not just do all electric? And um, two things he said was, uh, one, if we did it all electric, it would be heavier than we'd want it to be, the amount of batteries and stuff we would have to do. Um, and two, uh, we still love the sound, and we wouldn't get uh, the sound of, of an engine. Bravo. And – and then we got into this conversation, and not to spoil it, it was just why three cylinders? Why not two? Why not four? Why two liter and whatever? And he basically said they've done so much develop a, development on their V8 engines on doing high horsepower and high RPM with a big bore. And it goes everything from lightning the pistons and the rods to, to take a big bore, which you don't normally do, take a big bore piston and spin it to 9, 10, 11,000 RPM, right? And he said they've done so much technology, so much development on making that lightweight that you can do that efficiently. And he said so they were able to do big bore three-cylinder to get two liters, and uh, and it had the right kind of sound. He said – the two-cylinder version of it basically sounds like a Harley Davidson. So when they add that third cylinder, it enables them to dial it in the way they want, and it gets some sort of a big block sound to it that he wanted. Combined with with and and it's so lightweight. He just he's like, look, the engine combined with the with the with the electrification makes this car haul ass. And he was telling me, because you and I were asking these questions, he's like, look, he goes, this car is designed for four basketball players. It's meant for four big guys. He goes, and because, uh, he goes, this is the first, the designer, he goes, yeah, this is the first time that Christian called me and said, this is the family car and we're going to sell some in America. So I want cup holders. I want eight Eight cup holders. <laughs> so each seat's got two cup holders, and I think he kind of did it as a joke for us. But uh, the Gemra has eight cup holders, um, and their plan is to make 300 units over however long it takes, two and a half years, something like that. But um, anyway, that interview more uh, later in the week. I think you guys are going to like that. Uh, Conan's Egg is fantastic. But as you talk about putting together a TV show and drag racing against your car, of course there's going to be the guy out there with the Aventador, some all-wheel drive hypercar. Bring but, him on. But uh, but you know Tesla Tesla's Model S Model S Plaid is coming out. It's a possibly a 2022 model. If you've seen the spy photos with the wide flares and the vents I'll get on, him on it, on the third and, charge. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. I was on the third charge. 1,100 horsepower. They're saying that the Model S is uh, will do 0 to 60 in under two seconds and run the quarter mile in 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 the nines. I don't know it's going to be under nine seconds. That would be pretty uh, pretty optimistic. But Any uh, Tesla that comes on the show has to get extra B-roll shot before the race, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm curious how many back to back runs they're they're able to do. And look, a, a race is a race, so it doesn't need to, to, uh, to do it again and again and again, and then you just start picking away at it. But I don't know. The idea of an 1100 horsepower Model S um, is interesting. But Lucid, which we talked about, said, "Hey, they debuted their sedan. They had three versions of it." Various horsepower levels, um, but they've also been testing and they teased their three motor version. By the way, the Tesla Model S is a three motor version, and I, I assume the way we're we're going to see that happen is uh, a motor on each of the rear wheels, 
so you can get some torque vectoring, um, mm-hmm. and then one in the front. Uh, I would imagine Lucid is plan is to do something similar. Uh, but Lucid's teaser video <laughs> had a had a basically drag race. I think it was the a, a Porsche. It was a Porsche, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was the Porsche Taycan, and uh, it smoked it. Yeah, and then they gave a little glimpse of like of of the time, and uh, they implied it ran a nine sixty two. Gotta love that. Quietly you see the trunk space in that vehicle. I know. Oh my God, they said it ran a nine sixty two pretty pretty <laughs> quietly. Um, Dude, the world's is, uh, changing right in front of our eyes. Which is pretty interesting. So we're, we're going to have electric cars that are running nines. You're right. Maybe not five times in a row, but maybe once or twice in a row. Um, and I. I don't know what happens to those if you do put four slicks on it. I'm not saying mini tub it and get the biggest thing out, but, you know, size for size, you know, if they're running, I don't know, a 275 tire or something in the back, is there a slick uh, version of it that you can fit? Is anybody, there's got to be videos of it. Has anybody run? That's my uh, question. Uh, I want to see it do with a four gnarly slicks on it. Yeah, I want to see it. Oh, I just want to see it hook up like hell, right? It's yeah, funny because. Well, that too. We we've seen some of the the all wheel drive videos. We've seen Nissan GTRs launch like a beast and basically lift the front end, and we've seen uh, the Jeep uh, the the Trackhawk mm-hmm. right on four slicks and putting down a thousand horsepower and those things launch. Uh, Someone has to have done it already. Somebody's doing it on a Tesla. I'm just wondering if if it holds up or do things really start to break. And look, I, I'm not saying it shouldn't break. I'm saying it probably should break, right? And then what modifications do you do to make it not break? Uh, but without the conventional pieces like what you're talking about on your car, the rear end, uh, I don't. Is there a differential to break? There's no differential to break. Maybe the same thing you're talking about. Yeah, uh, what's control gonna arms? Break? Maybe lower control arms or some sort of control arms. Uh, on it, um, I believe they're all independent rear. So, is there, there's there's not really like a half shaft. I I haven't got into the anatomy of the Tesla too much now that I think about it. Uh, but it would be uh, interesting to find out what the weak links are for that. Other than on pass four, maybe you don't have the power, and that's <laughs> and that's and that's the weak link. But uh, it should be kind of uh, interesting. So Tesla's coming out with. Uh, with a with a three motor, possibly a three motor Model S that's going to put out, um, uh, we're guessing eleven hundred horsepower, and and Lucid is uh, I don't know what their horsepower is going to be in that. It, I, the rumor is two thousand two thousand ten horsepower. What? <laughs> yeah, two thousand and ten horsepower. Uh, I I I think I thought somebody... there were three packages. Didn't didn't you speak about it last week? There were three packages, like the there six, are. the eight, and the thousand horsepower. Yes, but what they're saying is, if you did the math on each of the of of each of the motors and the potential horsepower of those motors, if okay. you did a three motor version, it looks like the math would add up to two thousand and ten horsepower. It doesn't mean it will. It doesn't mean you're going to get the batteries and make it happen. Uh, who 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 knows? But. Um, I would say both of these cars are going to be well over a hundred or well over a thousand horsepower to get these things to move into uh, move into that nine second zone and possibly below nine seconds. And two thousand of that two two thousand pounds of that is going to be batteries. Yeah, it's going to be. Now you talk about batteries and weight and two thousand horsepower. Um, I don't know if you got a. a a chance to see the video that Lotus put out with the Avisia. I think I'm saying it. Avisia. I did not. I, Avisia. So we, we talked to the designer, Russell, I think Russell, I forgot his name about uh, the new supercar yes. that Lotus was coming out with. It is, uh, uh, is it, is it a hybrid electric or is it, was it all electric? I think it, me- it was meant to be, uh, Electric. I think it's meant Wasn't to be it all electric. I think it was all electric. Um, I think it's all wheel drive. That's the one with the beautiful rear end on the car, right? Yeah, it does. It, um, 
and, and we spoke to them a little bit about sort of the design ideas for it and the airflow through the body and stuff. But now they took one of their one of their team members, one of their test drivers or engineers, put it on their test track, and he did a, a bunch of laps in it. But spoke to us on camera about the different drive modes, and the different drive modes really changed the amount of horsepower uh, that it can it can range and. As crazy as it sounds, the ranges are from anywhere from about a thousand to two thousand uh, horsepower. Um, uh, like the uh, the city mode, or there's a range mode. Range mode is you're just on the open freeway. You want to use as you want to save as much battery power as possible. So it detunes itself to only one thousand horsepower. Damn. <laughs> and then uh, the, a, a city mode. Activates more of the braking power, the regenerative, regenerative, regenerative. <laughs> That's a word I don't know why I could never really figure out how to say it. Uh, it don't look at me; it, I've been hitting the head too many times. It, it 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 activates that more. So when you're doing a lot more of the stop and go, um, it, you get more of that engine braking or the simulated mm. engine braking. Um, and then so there's a range mode, a city mode, a tour mode. And then a sport mode and a track mode. Uh, and uh, I think the tour mode is, I don't know, 1,400 horsepower. Sport is 1,700 horsepower. By the way, 1,254 pound-feet of torque in that mode as well. And then the track mode, I believe, is the full 2,000 <laughs> 2, horsepower. Uh, but in typical... Uh, the, the conversation was interesting. It's not a very long video. I don't know, seven minutes, five minutes, something like that. It's worth a see because he kind of just gets into the details while he's driving the car. And he talks about how Lotus needed to make a decision. Lotus very famously saying add lightness to it. So the cars were uh, not overly powered, but made to be lightweight, and that's how they always performed. How do you do that in an electric car? Um, and then where do you put the weight? And he talked about the weight being right behind the driver, uh, basically the the bulkhead between the driver and the rest of the car uh, being a two-seater. And I don't know if he meant it was sort of centered, like on the tunnel or behind him, like a, like a wall. And he sort of implied more of a wall there, and it puts mm – -hmm puts that weight in the perfect position according to their calculations. Um, and then also the amount of batteries that they use, they needed to come up with the right amount to get the power, get the range, but not not overshoot. You know, if can they make a 500-mile range, 500 range version? I don't know, probably, but it doesn't make sense to add that kind of weight. Anyway, the end result is... The car comes in at about 3,700 pounds, and that seems incredibly lightweight. I don't think a GT350, you know, uh, is 3,700 pounds. That's probably a little more than 3,700 pounds. The Camaro so, ZL1 yeah. um, and, and certainly, certainly the big Dodge cars, we're, we're 4,000, 40-something 40, 40 hundred pounds. So uh, 3,700 pounds for an electric car uh, seems light to me. Um, I don't know the full specs on range and whatnot, but— the video is kind of cool, and seeing that car go around the track and what the guy's doing with it is is uh, is badass. Now, uh, stylistically, that's more of an aero car, isn't it? If I'm thinking yeah. of the same, okay, yeah, yeah, not a big wing car. That the air kind of flows through it, and again, without a combustion engine on board, you can shape. You can really start to shape. Uh, uh, the body around it. Uh, we're going to have Brett uh, jump in with us. Brett Clark from uh, from Expel is going to join with us in a second. Uh, we had the conversation about the Ford GT when we had the designers here back when we were doing the uh, 24 hour war, um, doing that documentary. We had all the cars here. You guys heard the story. We had the GT, you know, 350. We had the Focus RS, and we had the, a, a Ford GT prototype. I got to go for a ride in and. And the designers were here, and they were talking about, hey, why do the V8? Uh, why not do the V8? Why do the V6 turbo? And they said, well, it's smaller, it's lighter, it's packaging. And when you look at that teardrop shape of the Ford GT from above, you see the the windshield wrap around and then go back into a point. And then the bodywork has those flying buttresses that kind of yes. – he goes, that 
the EcoBoost V6 allowed the engine to be small enough to get them that shape. It allowed it, all the packaging to kind of happen. Yeah, um, and I get it. And after driving it, I, I'm a firm believer that it was a hell of a, that's a great combination. I mean, everything, every, everything could always use more power, but yeah. that car, I mean, that's a special car. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful car. The technology that goes into it and the fact that it's an arrow. It's uh, it was the first time I drove something like that, but mm-hmm. the feedback was freaking awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was able to drive one as well, and uh, they gave me one for like two days or something, and drove it around town, and just also just like literally around town, and then be able to open it up in a couple of places. Um, and uh, one of the f- one of the fun things on there that they talked about, but when you experience it, you're like, oh, that's weird. Is a, a lot of the supercars have the front axle lift. And it's yeah. kind of a slow motor, um, but Not there's there's this, it's like a I don't know it's like a, yeah it's like a hydraulic it bounces yeah. up it totally just bounces up, uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, Chris, we have Brett joining. Yeah, let's uh, him in right now. All right, we're gonna get Brett in there. But uh, anyway, the Lotus video is kind of cool, so you guys want to check that out. Um, so now we've got uh, Brett Clark from Expels joining us. Hey, Brett, how are you? I'm good. How are y'all doing? Doing all right. So, uh, uh, you've been working quite a bit with our uh, with our buddy Bill Goldberg right now, and we've actually. Yes, indeed. Uh, it was a while back we spoke to somebody Expel uh, from Expel as well. We 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 talked a bit about the pain protection protection film, um, but uh, you guys definitely have a, a quite a few products in the lineup, and you guys are working on some projects together, not just on the car side, but the the big garage as well. Is that right? For sure. Uh, here at the San Antonio market, I've been honored to work with Bill and service his vehicles. We've uh, installed paint protective film in window 10 on his wife's beautiful new Land Rover, uh, Rover full size. And uh, we've also done some additional work on his uh, Hellcat Red Eye, which has got to be the car with the most horsepower in his shop right now, I will add. Um, but yes, definitely. We also did uh, tint on uh, on Bill's wife's car too. So it's it's just a great uh, relationship we have with the Goldberg team, and uh, there is plans in the works to do his uh, his garage when that Goldberg garage gets uh, fully established. I understand he's got permits. I don't know if groundbreaking's happened yet, but that's at a yeah. higher level above me as far as uh, working the uh, the residential film on that. And really, that's like a commercial grade film. So that's the full line of products that we offer in addition to the ceramic coating. And um, the paint correction that comes prior to the ceramic coating install. But yeah, we're honored to to be partnered up with Team Goldberg, and and it's a great company. Expel is and, and provide these products to the car enthusiasts and certainly a lot of your listeners. Now, b- uh, Bill, before you made the shift out to Texas, uh, I know you did. This is we could bring up the story a little bit again. You had the red eye, the the uh, with, but. The paint was gloss, but the hood was matte, so we had to go with a satin paint protection film and then the gloss paint protection film, and then the nice little old lady gave you a little love tap in the back of that car, <laughs> and then uh, you had to kind of reduce some things on it. But you brought it up to – you brought the car out to Springfest, um, not this past year because COVID, obviously, but the year before, and um, the quality of paint protection film, how it's – it's evolved is fantastic. Uh, the the crystal clear nature of it now is way better than what the let's just call it clear bra used to be. It had a bit of that orange peel on it now. So, uh, Bill, tell us what you did on your car, and then Brett can explain where we are in product development. Well, you know, I, I had the car up at Expel in uh, in San Diego, right off Miramar, and. Um, it was right after I purchased the car, got it up there. Ironically, I they delivered the car to me the day before they debuted the ceramic coating. So I didn't get the ceramic coating on it up there. Um, that's something I definitely want to do in the future. But, you know, you had you kind of rehashed the story. I was up for a fitting for NCIS, two and a half hour drive from San Diego. Uh, I make the two hour and 25 minute drive. And on the last five minutes I get rear ended <laughs> and uh, so I get the car fixed. And then I'm planned that, you know, to come out here to San Antonio. So I got the car fixed and I didn't have the time to drop it off the expel. So half the car is wrapped with the clear protective and half wasn't for the past 
you know, since November. So uh, yeah, I thought it was time to uh, <laughs> rekindle my relationship with the guys and, and uh, uh, meet the local guys and go up there. And it, it's the third time I've been up and uh, man, they do some absolutely fantastic work and, and turnarounds unbelievable, but I'm really excited for the garage. Um, they've got such a wide array of products and every one of them has been fantastic. You know, the, the self healing uh, aspect that they have the characteristics on the, on the, the clear wrap that I've got on the car right now is fantastic. I don't know if you've ever had something like that, but uh, the self healing properties, man, it, uh, it lends itself to a guy who drives his car every single day. Um, I've had nothing but great results from the products. So sure. I, I'm, I'm thinking about getting the truck done, and I'm going to have some questions about that for Brett. But Brett, first, tell Boom. us a little bit about how how the it's paint protection right film, how, how did the paint protection film evolve over, I don't know, when it came out 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Maybe it seems like it's longer than that. But uh, when the product started to now, why why is it so much better now? No, that's a great question. So the origin of it is is one of those tactical to practical stories, right? We get a lot of our great things in, in daily use and in practical life from the military. And it was originally used as a uh, protective edge, protective film on helicopter blades uh, back in the Vietnam time. The, the, the helicopter uh, usage was evolving and they said, hey, we really need to protect the blade edges are chipping and too much wear and tear. We're having to swap those out. So um, a, a company at the time then developed uh, the, the earliest form of protective film to do just that, protect the helicopter edge. Uh, and then at about the same time, car bras were getting popular with the with the, the leather, the pleather, the different fabrics on the front of vehicles. So two wise gentlemen uh, basically took and evolved that in about the 80s, 90s. Um, uh, a, a, a not to be named uh, adhesive company was kind of starting off with that product. And then the gentleman who started Expel broke from that company. And in 1996, they developed it. 97, they found that Expel and we've been headquartered here in San Antonio ever since. So the, the paper protective film has evolved. You, you bring up a great point and not just how it originated, but thereafter we've improved it in 2011. We developed ultimate plus, which is the newest and current use of film. It's about eight mils thick. And on average, our clear gloss top coat on that film is a little thicker than our competitors. Um, And that's where, you know, Bill mentions the self-healing capabilities. That's where we get that strength and resiliency in the self-healing characteristic of it. It is accurately clear. I mean, it's virtually invisible in a car. You cannot tell that a film, a car has film on it if it's a good install, which is what we pride ourselves on. And what Expel teaches here in San Antonio to all the independents that operate. The gentleman that installed uh, on his vehicle out in California were Expel trained and they're representing our brand. We have seven corporate locations in Texas and Dallas, Austin, Houston, San Antonio, of course, uh, as well as Boise, Idaho, uh, Las Vegas, and then up in Canada, there's another one. So those are the corporate locations that offer the corporate um, warranty and, and, and are basically that, that portion of the company's traded on the stock market has been since uh, late 2018, early 19. Uh, but then we have independents all over the world that represent the Expo brand and sell our products, both the, the paint protective film, window tint, and ceramic. Um, but certainly the, the film has evolved, and nowadays it is a, a, a caliber of quality that is stronger than the earliest versions. <clears throat> and we even have for track cars, uh, like you heard me mention, it's eight mils thick. The, uh, the, the track film we recommend for cars that are going to be taken routinely over posted highway speed, you know, speed mm-hmm. limits and on the track uh, for protection <laughs> from rubber, track debris and, and anticipated higher uh, impacts. Uh, we have a 10 mil film which is even thicker. And the, the science on that shows that it's about 38, almost 40% um, uh, more protectant than the eight mil film. And the price point's only 20% um, above the eight mil film standard ultimate plus. So it's a great product. It's like an, it's like an active insurance. I like to refer to it as, you know, insurance is passive. If something happens, it's there in the background, but active insurance, things all, all your, your car is always being struck by debris, whether you know it or not. Construction on the roads, um, road grime debris, tree sap, bug guts, road tar, whatever it is, the, the Expo is actively protecting you from that. So it's a pretty cool product. So I, I, a question that I had for you is 
I, I, I would imagine a lot of guys are going through this. So a lot of guys now are doing a paint correction on it. Even when you get a car new, uh, you know, from a factory, it's just sprayed on. It's got a little bit of orange peel in it, uh, especially if you get black, which uh, which uh, if you talk to Goldberg, it's, that's that's <laughs> his, 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 his favorite color when it comes to cars. So sure. I I have my uh, I have my truck, my '95 Lightning. This is an example where yeah. you know after 25 years. Uh, it needed a it needed a, a paint refresh, and we were taking the vehicle to SEMA. We got it painted. Yes, they did a quick uh, a wet sanding on it, but that all happened in the course of like forty eight hours. And yep. once it once it ends up drying and shrinking a little bit, it has a little bit of an orange peel to it. Now, there are several options. I could just. Uh, I could throw some paint protection film on it because it's not going to make a difference uh, to the visual look of it. Or uh, I could have the paint correction done. I can have it really kind of sanded down and finished up and take every little piece of orange peel and swirl out of it um, and throw some uh, some uh, uh, maybe a ceramic coat on it or something like that. But what's your thought on doing paint protection or doing uh, uh Paint restoration, doing that uh, color restoration before putting the paint protection film. Is it worth it or not worth it to even do that, especially if you have a black car, let's say? So great question. And I think it depends on the purpose of the vehicle, one, and the owner's desires with you know how show car quality shine they're looking to maintain. We, before installing ceramic, always do the paint correction. And the reason for that is uh, you want to not put lipstick on a pig. You want to have the absolute most beautiful surface on which to install that ceramic protective layer, right? So the recommendation and and, and always uh, the rule that we fall prior to ceramic, not necessarily paint protective film, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but ceramic. Uh, we're going to five-step paint correct that thing, uh, that vehicle, and get it looking like glass. Mirror-like finish, um, removing all micro abrasions, all swirl marks, and all and all you know, clear coat top level scratches, right? Because we're not spraying, we're not doing any people here paint correction in the in the less than high level car enthusiast world, and they think you're painting something sometimes. You're not, right? You're just polishing it to a high sheen, removing any swirl marks, micro abrasions. Then on top of that, you're putting we would install the Fusion Plus product, which is um, a ceramic silicone proprietary blend. It works both with paint protective film and with a clear coat um, and all other surfaces um, of the of the vehicle. And it's going to give you that that high gloss, super hydrophobic, extra slick show car quality shine you want. Uh, and again, you're you're getting that because you're starting off with having paint corrected first and and the the glass like reflective you know best shine we can provide. The difference between that and paint protective film is um, the ceramic is giving you that that hydrophobic energy, super easy to wash coating, high car quality shine, show car quality shine rather. Whereas the paint protective film is actually getting you more dedicated protection. It's a layer of protective film, eight mil thick. The thickness of the uh, fusion is at the nano level. It's it's a much thinner product. While it is providing a very hardened layer of ceramic over the top of the clear coat, of the vehicle, it's not a dedicated cushion like the polyurethane with acrylic adhesive that is that paint protective film. Mm -hmm. And additionally, um, when you install the film on a vehicle, you're getting a whole new clear coat. You're, the top coat clear coat of that paint protective film is going to be that high gloss shine that's replacing the old clear coat. So as long as the as long as the micro abrasions, as long as the scratches on your existing clear coat aren't that bad, they're not going to show through that new level of clear coat that is the paint protective film. So it's a little bit different applications. Um, and the best protection I would recommend is do both. Exactly. Wrap the whole car, paint protective film, and then boom, put ceramic on top of that. When you put the paint protective film on, most of the time you're negating having to do paint correction because you're giving it a whole new clear coat. Then ceramic over that, the extra added layer of, of Fusion Plus hardness, super slick coating, makes it extra easy to wash. Okay, then you... Stupid, stupid question. Yeah. So if you did that... Would you still? Oh no, I answered my own question. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. No, you're saying. Uh, no, would the, you still do the paint correct? You asked him originally the 
do the paint corrected before you do the clear before you do the wrap. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so if you did the wrap and then the ceramic over it, would you suggest to paint correct prior because you didn't, you know, oh, yeah. good question. Good, good, good question. So like I said, if, if the, if the paint on the vehicle is not that bad, like if it's a new car from the, from the dealership, even those you gentlemen know, even those can show up from transport oh, yeah. from being around the dealership, they get scratches and micro abrasions in, in their make ready room. Right. Sometimes yeah. that just, happens. especially a black car, like, like was mentioned. So, if, if they're minor micro abrasions, even on a new car, when you put that paint protective film on, that is the new clear coat gloss layer, right? So I wouldn't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and upsell a customer and say, hey, yeah, you need to paint correct first, then we're gonna put the film, then we're gonna put the ceramic. If it's not that bad, now here's the, here's the caveat to that. If it's a two or three year old car that has more wear and tear on it, and we think that some of those uh, deeper level abrasions are, might show through the film. Because the film, again, is, as I mentioned, accurately clear, right? It's clear. You, you barely notice it's on the vehicle. So if there are scratches and significant abrasions that, that, are, that are on the surface of a clear coat of that, say, two-year-old car or something, or say it's new and it's got, you know, we just uh, installed on a 2019 truck that had already 54,000 miles on it. Uh, but if it's like that, then, yes, I would recommend the paint correction first, then the, um, then the paint protective film, and then the uh, Fusion Plus on top of that. Okay, so I I, I think we're all kind of saying out, yeah that's, yeah that's so very we're, we're we're kind of saying the, the the same thing, but the the question was without trying to like insult anybody was when you put the paint protection film on, it's never as clear as a really well done paint job. So are you wasting your time with color correction if you're just going to wrap it anyway? And uh, uh, so that that would be p- part of the question. Now, there's a caveat to that is because maybe you're not wrapping the entire car, which I'll bring up in a second. But uh, sure. but yes, the question is, like, if I went to somebody and said, hey, uh, I, I want to wrap this truck. It's black. It was painted two years ago. Uh, should we do the paint restoration first? Some shops will say, sure. Some shops will say, don't waste your time with the paint correction. Paint looks pretty good. When you wrap it anyway, it's going to bring it back a little bit. You know, it's not going to be like the... And, and it will. Okay. Legit, it will. Um, like I said, I'm not going to... I don't want to waste customers' money. I'm not going to say, yeah, you definitely should do the paint correction because you're going to... It definitely needs it. Like, if it doesn't need it and that new clear coat provided by the paint protective film is going to bring that high gloss you know, to the level that we want it to be. And mm-hmm. really, if the, again, if the paint's not that old, like I said, if it's an older vehicle and it's shown wear and tear, then d- definitely the paint correction. Um, now, but so, if, if it's not needed, I'm not going to try and upsell it. That's the bottom line. So, but here's the other thought. You've got something like my, my truck, not, you know, 95 Lightning is not the biggest truck in the world compared to trucks, but it's, it's big, right? So I can sure. see on the front of the vehicle, paint protection film being a benefit. And I really see uh, along the top of the bed rails and just a little bit on on the sides of the bed. I'm constantly throwing boxes yep. back and forth. And, uh, oh, for sure. and as, as much as I have that truck lowered, I'm a little guy, so I'm always rubbing up against it. And you can see it's not bad now because we haven't done it much, but you can see where it's starting to – you know, like it's rubbing a little bit. It needs to be detailed out, compounded out. So, um, yeah, and I, 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 I completely agree with you on that point. Like, I, I if don't you're know. Put film over that, then yeah. Okay, so and tear. I don't know if it's the most cost efficient thing for me to put the paint protection film on the entire truck. So maybe the process would be: you tell me, do I wrap the whole truck or? Do I have paint protection done on the whole truck, get that black looking good, and then I wrap, I put the, the, the film on, let's say, the front and the, the bed rail areas, and then just those areas are done. And put fusion on it. And then, and then ceramic coat the entire thing with, with you know, the exposed uh, of paint and the paint protection film. Like, do you wrap the whole thing or do you do part of it? And again, it comes back to price point and protection desired, the, the balance between those. For, for the way you're describing it, I would recommend what you said. Paint correct, 
put the full front paint protective film on and any other high wear and tear areas, maybe you want rail bed edges, yeah. uh, top top of the bed rail edges, or maybe you want door cups and, and edges uh, for your the edges of your doors, like a wear and tear type kit. And then ceramic the whole vehicle. That's going to be cheaper than wrapping the whole truck, right? Because when you wrap the whole truck, you're talking roof, quarters, back of the cab, yeah, yeah, yeah. tailgate, everything. I think to- that's I think that's overkill for that vehicle, Matt. If you want to yeah. think about it, you know, apples to apples. I did the uh, the twenty five hundred, the Ram. Yeah, uh, I took it to Expel, and they did exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Okay. Now, when you start ba- breaking down price, and, and forgive me, I'm not trying to beat you up on this, but if I wrap the whole thing in paint protection film, I wouldn't spend the money on doing the paint correction, right? Because the paint's pretty good. So, if it's, yeah, like we, like so we talked about, what, Matt, if, what, it's, if it's pretty good, then I'm not recommending paint correction. You were what, talking about swirl marks and stuff already in it. And if you want that beautified, and you're not putting paint protective film there, then maybe well, you want to go with the paint brush. Well, it, it's like somebody going off and buying a new car or, or getting a, your, your new Ram or like, let's say, Bill, you got a, a new TRX in the mail, basically, right? When that <laughs> thing shows up, do you paint correct it and then wrap or do you just, you just do a, a, the wrap on it? Because here's the question. What costs more, expel paint protection film or paint correction, five-step detailing, grinding away? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, so that that would be the question. So if you're talking about, hey, where do you want to spend the money? Uh, I don't know if it's apples to apples. So either I paint correct the entire truck and wrap some of the spots, or I don't paint correct anything and I wrap the whole damn thing. I say you paint correct <laughs> only the places that are high wear areas. <laughs> then you then you wrap those areas and then ceramic the entire vehicle. This is That's too confusing. My... I'm going to sell the truck. Exactly. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do I'll that. Buy it. Um... And I'm Steve Austin. Ten bucks. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I just got the engine delivered, and the transmission showed up today. As before, I walked in uh, from Bowler. Steve transmission. delivered it. No, he didn't. But now I know Steve's going to hit me up and go, "Well, what are you going to do with the engine in your truck? You know, what are you going to do with that supercharger that's in your truck? Would that oh, work exactly. on my Bronco?" Or like, I'm sh- sure it does. That we, hey, we don't go on until tomorrow, so you got at least twenty four hours of free time before <laughs> knocking on your door. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, as long as I don't post it, post it to Instagram yet. Um, all right. Listen, Brett, I appreciate the information. Uh, super help, super helpful. Guys, check out expel.com. It's xpel.com. Of course, everything that we're interested in the automotive world from tint and paint protection and uh, uh, ceramic coating is all there. But yes, as we touched on, they have uh, commercial residential uh, uh, products as well. Um, I can tell you that... Uh, part of this is also you know bill when you were telling me about doing the garage uh adam uh, uh has another uh, house and uh it's it's you know it's let's just say it's a house by the beach in malibu and we walk over to the window and it's got a tint on it that's been there for 25 years and you just feel the heat coming off that bitch and i'm like oh, yeah. hey uh, it probably needs some sort of modern ceramic coated whatever there you know you type so of ceramic film do the trick right yeah there. it's like we need to Boom. block the heat not just block like because when you go too dark you're blocking your view yeah, right yeah. And it's like so we need less tint but more heat protection and if somebody can uh, vent that product expel and expel has it man. <laughs> <All Expel right. laughs> has it. we have a full line of uh, residential and commercial film we can again cut down the total solar energy and that's called tisser total solar energy rejection that's how the film is rated mm-hmm. and it's actually rated extremely high against our competitors i'll just ah. say um not not to not to put anybody on blast but expel the, the product line the pride we have in it being an american-made product and the pride we have in being based out of san antonio here uh is tremendous and it's i'm, I'm honored to work for the company it's great people it's positive energy it's good motivation um, it's it's right in line with what uh, 
what uh, you guys espouse. I, I don't I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not, but my little my little trick that I've been doing on all of my cars is when I go and I get the windows tinted, I have them do the good ceramic tint on the front windshield, but very, very sure. see-through. Like, it doesn't really have any tint in it at all. And I'm doing that just for that UV protection so it doesn't yep. screw up my dash. You think about all the, like, the high-end cars, Ferraris with the leather dash shrinks, or you get cracks in the plastic. And yep. I was like, I don't know if it's going to protect it completely, but if it gets me a little bit of extra protection, I run that. I did it on the Alfa Romeo. Uh, a spider because that dash cracks. I did it on my truck. Uh, um, every car I have, I've done it on the front windshield as well. Spot on. And that's growing huge in popularity uh, across the tent enterprise. And we have a film, uh, Prime XR Plus, that will get you up to 98% heat rejection in the IR spectrum. And that's what that or the film below that, uh, Prime XR, is up to 88%. Uh, heat rejection in the IR spectrum. And that's in addition to the 99% UV spectrum protection. Um, That's what you want to put on the windshield, completes that heat protection on the whole cab. Um, You you guys were talking about uh, a pretty cool thing with uh, Celine, Steve Celine the other day, Uh, the the racing Tesla, was it? He was talking about the supercharged uh, Tesla. Uh, And and he was saying how um, the the increased cooling system in that was helping uh, the speed and maintain the the uh, momentum and the the energy level of the vehicle on the track, the, the specifically yeah. the the uh, Tesla. And I was I was thinking, you know what? We've had customers say the same thing about our our window tint when they put the the full protection package on, meaning like you said, Matt, tint that windshield, tint the sunroof, very light. It's a seventy percent visible light transmission, so you, it doesn't even uh, really look like it's tinted. Um, but it's giving you that heat rejection and keeping the car cooler and keeping that battery cooler. And they're actually increasing their Tesla battery life because of the film on all windows. So that's a pretty cool, pretty cool science. What the what the all around protection heat rejection uh, Expel prime level film is providing and giving them an increased battery life in their Teslas. Yeah. And also, I would add, our film is actually recognized and recommended by the American Skin Cancer Foundation because how it protects your skin from the harmful rays from the sun, preventing melanoma, you know, pr- providing for protection of the most important, you know, body that we live in. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point. You you could effectively make your your any car, not just electric car, more efficient by, you know, good Who heat rejection. Down? Yeah, good heat rejection on the on the tent means uh, less energy you're, you're you're using on your air conditioning unit. You know, by the way, same thing in the house, in the shop, in your garage. By the way, Precisely. It, it, Bill, you're going to see it more than anybody when you start cranking up the air in that garage, and uh, versus yeah. having the tent versus and and uh, having it or not having it, you're going to see it uh, for sure. We did it and. and the warehouse is over here. Just putting the radiant barrier in, putting that that level of like reflective foil on the top. Oh my God, it's a yeah. huge, it's a huge difference oh, out here. You know, and um, not just in energy efficiency, Matt, but also in textile protection. Things don't fade as much, and as you mentioned, of course, increasing the lifespan of your dashboard, your steering wheel, um, in in the home and office application of your leather couches of your, of your carpets, of your artwork and beautiful homes that have that. So it, it's again, just a wise and very active investment for um, all around protection in that regard. All right, Brett, thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to hit this uh, Dodgery, but uh, check out expel.com for more information. This is a uh, Brett Clark. He's in San Antonio, but uh, they got locations everywhere. Go to the website. You can find an installer, uh, authorized installer to, to hook you up with this stuff. Uh, Thank this- you, Brett. No, thanks again, gentlemen. You guys live strong. Take care. You Thanks. got it, my friend. This is the best time to join the Brotherhood of Muscle because Dodge Power Dollars means you get a guaranteed discount. And the math is simple. You get $10 off based on the total horsepower of your new Dodge vehicle. And you can get a 2020 Challenger, Durango, Charger, doesn't matter. Uh, you can uh, roll in there. You get $10 off for each horsepower. They have the Dodge Charger Scat Pack. It's the SRT Scat Pack. It's got 485 horsepower. So you jump in one of those, you get $4,850 off. And Dodge Power Dollars is back on the Dodge Durango as well. So no matter where this summer takes you, the Dodge Durango is here to make every trip this season a breeze. So if you get more power, you get more off. It's that simple. Hurry into your local Dodge dealer now to take advantage of Dodge Power Dollars. All right. So before we wrap up, 
uh, I, I'm always fascinated. Your car. Yeah, I got the BMW for sale, but I'm always fascinated with the engineering talks behind these things, even though it's a simple product. And for us, it's a simple product. It's window tint. It's paint protection film. But we're all starting to use it more and more, and I like to oh, get yeah. into that more. Um uh, you'll you'll find some of that with uh, with the show again later this week with Kona's Egg as well. Um, yeah, so the M3 it's done. We made four ninety four horsepower to the tires on the on the dyno. I was very happy with that number. Uh, the car just drives strong. It's just it's fast. It's fun. But it's done, and it's move on to other projects. And I've got no place to park it, and I got to finish that Mustang, and I get the truck. Got to get the truck. What's going. cool, man, is that you're you're completely. You've already wiped your hands of it. That's Bravo. it. it good it's job, good to go. Dude. So it's a hard thing to do. It is up. It is live now on Bring a Trailer. It was exciting to see and like a little nervous and and uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like um, I I don't have kids, so it's not like sending a kid off to school or to college. But it's it's more like a foster dog where you're like, oh, you <laughs> trained you so well, but now you got to go to your forever home. So exactly. as, uh, as somebody who wants a badass uh, M3 uh, for their for its new forever home. And uh, whoever yeah. wants to be the next guest on. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You want to buy the car? You want to come on here and talk about it? Let me know what you think. And uh, now in eight months from now, uh, don't come back on the show with all of your issues with the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, get it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's no, but we don't want buyers remorse calling in. No, it's a fantastic uh, okay. car. It's fast as hell. Uh, I think you're going to have some fun with it. Uh, it, uh, it looks good. You know, it, it's, it, it's not perfect, but it's a car that I think you're going to enjoy driving. And I want somebody to go out and, and, and drive it. Uh, it makes uh, it makes great sounds and makes great power and the sound system works and the suspension seems to work and uh, it's fully adjustable. You guys can dial it in how, however you want. So I, I want you to go and I want you to have it. I want you to tweak it a little bit, maybe personalize it the way you want. Um, uh, you know, have have some Chris, fun. With there it. needs to be some really soft music playing while he's doing this. <laughs> yeah, right. Like so I'm telling him how <laughs> lovely this thing is. This is gonna be the best date of your life. <laughs> I feel like uh, the guy who was like, "You should date." The my days daughter. of our yeah. lives. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in uh, in in coming to America, the the McDowell's <laughs> guy is like trying to get his daughter out hooked up with the rich guy, and he's like, "Yeah, you should." Uh, uh, I forgot the other guy's name. Um, uh, before he finds out that Akeem has his own money. Daryl, Daryl is like, what's wrong oh, with Daryl? Daryl's got family money. He's going to take care of you. You know, that's what I want. Uh, I want my, uh, I want my BMW to go to a nice home. So you guys should enjoy the car and have You're some fun forever with it. forever surrogate father. It's up on bring a trailer. Now um, I'm going to do my best to jump on a couple times a day, answer any questions that anybody has. Um, and, uh, I know sometimes the conversation goes off in a direction where someone's like, well, I see you have a supercharger. I'm thinking about putting a supercharger on my M3. What do you think of this kit versus that kit? I'm happy to have that conversation with you, but hit me up on my social media, send me a direct message. Cause if we do it on the bring a trailer forum, then people are like, where, where are we going with this? What are we going to? Are we talking about the car? Are we buying? Are we selling? Or are we building somebody else's project in the comment <laughs> section? So uh, please feel free to hit me up on my social media and we'll get into it. Uh, but uh, uh, it's up there now. Uh, enjoy it. Have some fun. I try to make a little video, um, just a walk around video of the car. Nothing too exciting. We just shot it on the iPhone and then I cut in um, – uh, some some threw some revs at it. Uh, took it for a quick little drive, and uh, the clip of the dyno is in there as well. So hopefully, within uh, seven minutes of your life, you can find out everything you want on on that car. Did you put the video of you smoking that F forty in there? I I did not. Um, Dude, that would boost the price pretty good. <laughs> Uh, Iconic car. And I'll tell you what you do is when you go and you buy my car at a very, very favorable price to me, <laughs> you should get yourself some uh, some Geico insurance. Because right now, Geico is offering an extra 15% credit on car, motorcycle, RV, RV and BMW M3 policies. That's uh, 15%. And then take, it to, <laughs> and then take it back to bring a trailer and then... 
Go get your power dollars. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> get your new Dodge. Get it to, with some Geico. All right, so the 15% credit is on top of the money that Geico can already be saving you. So uh, hop on over to Geico.com. You want to switch by October 7th to save that extra 15%. Just visit Geico.com. All right, I think uh, I think it's good. I'm going to go and uh, do a little unboxing of... Uh, of the engine and transmission, maybe we'll see. It's very, very boxed up, but uh, you can't keep your hands off of it. Don't I, lie. I know. I just don't know where to put it yet. The truck is at. Just wear a helmet, Cam. I want to see your. I know. I, I'm, I'm going to have to plan something. I, I don't. I, I don't want to like half unbox it just to peek at it. Uh, but uh, I've reached out to our friends at Comp Cams, and uh, I'm going to get a custom uh, cam made. Uh, we've been working on the specs for the blower cam. And uh, the roller rockers and stuff, and uh, uh, I think we're going to end up with a Holly fuel injection. Oh, we we put this question out last week: the Holly EFI intake manifold or the original GT40 intake manifold. And when I put it out there, we were leaning like, "Hey, if you're going to go big power, go with the Holly." But I put it out there on social media, and I said this one or that one. And the overwhelming response was. Not to go with the Holly, and and you guys convinced me. I'm going to do it your way. Uh, most of you guys said, "Hey, you're going in a period direct uh, uh, fashion already." Like what we did with the wheels, having the original wheels recreated in a complete billet. And they said, "If you're going that direction anyway, stick with the theme of the vehicle and being somewhat nostalgic." So uh, I hear you guys. I love the idea. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to end up with a big air-to-air intercooler, and we've got uh, uh, the GT40 intake manifold uh, being ported, fully, fully ported. I, I, I'm going to see. I, I, I the guys working on it are supposed to provide me with like a book of like photos and test results and flow ratings and everything, and then uh, I, I'm optimistic, but. We'll see when we get it. I'll bring all the inf- material in. I'll take pictures of the manifold when I get it. Um, I will tell you that although I'm happy with what they're doing with it, I'm not happy with how long it's taking. It's going on a goddamn year. So uh, <laughs> this is almost a year sitting at the the port at the uh, at the porting place. The porter. I don't know if that sounds right, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, he's getting it done. <laughs> I don't know. At least he's texting me. He says he's getting it done, but I'm not. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'll get you all that information as soon as I have it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully very soon. Um, but that's it. Let's wrap it up. We got more stuff to do. Thanks, guys. Uh, Bill, thank you so much. I'm excited about breaking ground on the garage. You got some plans made. And out at our shop here, we just finally got delivery of the huge staircase from View Rail and all the glass Beautiful. railings. It's a big building yourself. It was like a semi truck with like 8,000 pounds of equipment. Like this oh stuff is God. amazing. There are eight installation manuals on how to get this done, but we're, we can't wait to start on this thing. It's going to look so good. I, I kind of want to get it done so I can send you some images. I don't want you to change your plans. I don't want you to try to get new permits. But I no. think, but you're going to like the way this thing turns out. We use a company called View Rail. Uh, I work yeah. with them to design the staircase. Uh, I made a slight modification into it, which needed to be done just because the building had like a pole, like a floor to ceiling pole. And I didn't want the stairs to like stop the at that. Up, up. Basically, it's that. Yeah. Now, there's eight of them, but where the stairs <laughs> where we're going to spew out on the uh, on the floor would be right by the pole. And I just thought it was too distracting to the eye. When you walked in, I wanted this great visual of this floating staircase made out of glass. And uh, so we made some custom modifications to make it work, and this company nailed it. I say they nailed it, but I can say they nailed it in the plans that they sent me in the rendering. We'll see see whether we put it together, if it's even going in the right direction. But I think think it looks good. Uh, they, They were so detailed in everything that they sent that they even included a brand new torque wrench. So when you assemble it, they gave you the tools to build this. We don't even need our own tools. Nice. Yeah, it worked well, they, out. They're, good. they're not leaving anything up to, you know. Yeah. Error. Uh, except I don't want to build it. Hopefully, Adam's got guys for that. So we're gonna. I'm gonna go there. Hey, hey guys, keep 
Just keep going. I'll yeah, go, good luck. I'll go get you You'll be over there unboxing I know. your engine. I know. I know. I will. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, we're going to wrap things up. Any, any, Anything else or anything we're missing? Lawman's almost done. Yeah. All right. We should... Uh, Ballman's we'll talk almost to- done. We should be waiting for the TRX coming here, you know, next month, hopefully soon. And uh, T-Rex. There's some, yeah, there's some, yeah. The, the next couple of weeks should be uh, interesting as far as drumming up some uh, terrific information, interesting information in the car world. All right. So, guys, just... Uh- uh, thanks for uh, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for following us on social media. We'll continue to post more stuff up there. And, uh, um, you know, I want to hear about uh, your stuff as well, your projects as well. So thanks for all the direct messages and the questions and the photos and all of the great things you guys send us. Love that. All right, guys, uh, till next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. And some air in the tire. <laughs> and that is the spare, but yeah. <laughs> the drag slicks. Take some air out. Yeah, there you go. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.